today we're gonna solve one of the biggest gripes I have about Final Cut Pro. It's that the overlays in the viewer are totally insufficient. Let me show you what I mean. Here under the view menu, I can turn on my title and action safe zones and I can show a horizon, but that's pretty much it. There's no rulers, there's no grid, there's nothing to help you align your graphical elements. And last week I was working on a client project and it was so hard to get things to line up properly because Final Cut has insufficient tools. So today we're gonna build a generator in motion that gives us the ability to have dynamic overlays to help us align our text and other graphical elements in Final Cut Pro. It's not the sexiest template for Final Cut Pro, but I think it might be the most useful. Now, if you don't use Motion, but you do want access to these dynamic guides, just join my Patreon community. All of my patrons get access to all of my working files and Motion templates that I've ever created on this YouTube channel. And if you don't use Motion, but you wanna learn, check out my course, Motion Launchpad, now available at jenjager.com. All right, let's dive right in. Here in my project browser, you can see my settings. I'm creating a Final Cut generator, and we've got a duration of 10 seconds long. Let's open this up. Let's get this project going. The first thing I wanna do is head on over to the library tab and find the grid generator. Then I'm gonna drag and drop the grid right into my project pane. Then let's hit the inspector tab and under the generator tab, let's dial down that background opacity all the way to zero. Then on the background width, I wanna crank it up to 200 as well as the background height. So you can see we have a perfectly centered grid of white lines. Let's change the line width from 10 to a value of two. And now I want to add a parameter behavior on the background height line. So I'm going to drop down here, navigate to add parameter behavior, and let's select link. And then from my project pane, I'm going to drag the grid into the source object well. And under compatible parameters, let's go down to object, grid, and background width. Now let's head back over to the generators tab and I wanna show you what I've done here. I've linked together the width and height of this grid. So if I reduce the width, the height slider travels exactly with it. And by the way, guys, you wanna make sure that your pixel aspect ratio here is on square. Otherwise your lines might not be perfectly square. And the last thing I wanna do with these grid lines is change the color. So I'm gonna reach for my favorite tool, the color cube. If you guys don't know what the color cube is, I will link to a video right here for you and down below. I love this tool for graphic design. So I'm gonna go with this color palette here for my grid cause they're kind of bright and they should be easy to see over video in Final Cut Pro, but I am gonna publish the color parameter on these so you can change the colors if you need to. So I'm going to select the line color. Let's head on over to our sliders option. And on the hex color, I'm going to make it this sky blue. Okay, great. So there is our grid. Now let's add some ruler lines to this generator as well. If you're not sure what ruler lines are, Apple Motion has them. I don't know why Final Cut doesn't. Basically allows you to grab your cursor and draw a line into your frame. These are not really there when you export your project. It's just a guideline and you can do them vertically and you can make as many as you need to. I can get rid of these guys just by grabbing them and dragging them to the top or bottom of my canvas. And so let's draw in some lines that are gonna serve the same purpose when we publish our generator. Let's go down to the shapes tool. I'm going to select line and I'm going to make a horizontal line by holding down the shift key and I'm going to draw a line just like slightly off frame. Then let's head on over to the properties tab and reset that parameter so it's centered. On the shape tab, I am going to give this a width of two as well. Nice and skinny. I'm going to change the color of this to a bit of a pink color. And on the properties tab, I'm going to give this a position on the Y value of positive 870. Now in my project pane, I'm going to rename this line to stay organized. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate this line. Under the properties tab, I'm going to give it a value of negative 870 on the Y axis. And let's go back to the shape tab and change the color and rename this to horizontal line two. All right, let's grab that line, right click to duplicate it. This time I'm going to, under the properties tab, rotate it to 90 degrees. I'm going to reset the parameters here so it's nice and centered. Under the shape, let's change the color of this guy 
and back under properties, I'm going to give it a position on the X value of negative 1740. Let's call this vertical line one. And then we're gonna duplicate that line, change the color, and under the properties tab, we're going to give this a value of positive 1740. So there's the look of my grid. Now let's start publishing some parameters so we can adjust this in Final Cut Pro. I want to have the option for someone to have the grid enabled or disabled. So we're gonna create a rig. So under the opacity line, I'm going to drop down, select add to rig, create new rig, and I just want it to be a checkbox. I want the option to be on or off. So let's start rig edit mode and dial down the grid opacity and stop rig edit mode. And now when I check the box on, you can see the grid. And when I turn it off, there's no grid. Let's leave it on. And I'm going to publish this parameter and then head up to the project line in the project pane into the project tab. And let's label that grid on off. Let's keep it going with the grid. There's some other parameters I wanna publish. For instance, remember our slider that lets us adjust the size. I'm going to publish the background width parameter. Let's head back over to the project line in our project pane. And in the inspector, let's rename this. And then one more time, let's head back to the grid and let's publish the color because perhaps you're trying to use this grid over a blue background and you can't see it. We wanna make sure it can be visible. Okay, great. Now let's just do all the same stuff with our lines. Let's start with horizontal line one. Under the properties tab, under opacity, we're gonna create a rig, start edit mode, reduce the opacity, stop rig edit mode, enable the line, and then publish our checkbox. Head back to project. In the project pane, head back to the project tab and rename this checkbox. And then let's go back to that line, head over to the properties tab, twirl down on the position, and we want to publish just the Y position, not the whole position, just the Y position. Go back to project. And lastly, let's go back to that horizon line and publish the color as well. All right, now I just need to go back and do this to the rest of my lines. Make sure when you're doing the vertical lines that you're publishing the X position instead of the Y position. While I'm publishing these parameters, if you guys like this video, if you wanna see me solve more of Final Cut Pro's problems, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, this looks great to me. Let's go up to the file menu and save as, let's call it grid and guides. I'm gonna save it my generators and let's hit publish and head on over to Final Cut Pro. So here in my generators, you can see our grid and guides. Let's drop it in our timeline and see how we did. All right, first let's try playing with the grid size. So yeah, that totally works. What if I made it white? In this case, it might be easier to see if this grid was white. Yep, we can change the color. Here's the horizontal line position. We can change this. And what this allows me to do is perfectly align, let's say this piece of text with this logo. And this is just gonna make everything so much easier when it comes to layouts in Final Cut Pro. And when you're done with your project, just remember to either disable or delete that generator. So like I said, not the sexiest template we've ever made for Final Cut Pro, but probably one of the most useful. If you wanna snag this generator for yourself, join my Patreon community. I will link to it down below. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. Here's some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.